What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, the Time Teller, and here on my desk, you know, where I do my reviews, uh, I always have some fun things to play with, and it's because, uh, well, some of it's functional, right? I do a lot of writing, so I have my pen, I open a lot of packages, so I have a pocket knife, and uh, this, I don't smoke, but it is a little bit of like a fidgety thing because I have really bad ADD. Um, but what is this? Well, we're gonna talk about it because this is one of the most interesting things in watchmaking that I've had uh, the privilege of owning and sharing with you guys. So yeah, let's talk about this. It is 4.36 p.m. Let's get down to business. Little shameless plug for the Time Teller shop, this immaculate Hamilton is still available. Alright guys, so we're talking about collecting anything really, but specifically watches for the sake of this video. Whether we like it or not, the brand name that is written on a watch's dial matters when it comes to, you know, evaluating the uh, price retention and the cost of an item. And I don't think that you should be buying things, especially watches, just because of the name that is on the dial. You should be buying things that you enjoy. Like this Mont Blanc pen, I'd be lying to you if I didn't buy it somewhat because it is a Mont Blanc. I mean, most of it is because uh, I grew up, my dad using Mont Blanc pens, and uh, I always thought that it was kind of the pinnacle of writing tools. Now, I'm a casual. This is a rollerball variant because I smudge everywhere and fountain pens are just a no-no for me. Um, but yeah, this reminds me of my dad. It reminds me of, uh, you know, his success. And, and, and if I could have something that he used, then it kind of made me feel a bit more successful. And yeah, it's a Mont Blanc. So um, yeah, you know, brand is somewhat in the equation here. We're looking at this pen, uh, this knife a lagule. Um, you know, there's some really big EDC dudes that watch my channel. Uh, shout out to Slicey Dicey. He's one of my channel members and he has his own YouTube channel where he's uh, very proficient at reviewing blades and other EDC items. But um, yeah, this definitely has some huge history and lagule, uh, you know, carries a lot of weight in the EDC world. I'm sure Slicey Dicey can talk to you about that. Um, we're talking about lighters. You know, again, I've never smoked in my life, but Zippo, you know, I guess kind of the, uh, I don't know, dare I say the Rolex of lighters. I mean, they're not expensive, but they're pretty much like when you think of lighters, you either think of Bic or Zippo, right? Ah, I don't know, someone educate me about that. But what about this? Well, I guess we gotta get a little closer to talk about it. So we get up close, but to leave some perspective for you, I mean, this is my thumbnail. Uh, this thing was smaller than a Zippo. Um, it's leather bound, okay, we have some metal here. Uh, it's quite interesting. Well, let's, ooh, yep, interesting indeed. What could this be? Well, a time-telling instrument, but uh, what's that on the dial? Tiffany & Co. That's right, this is a Tiffany & Co. gentleman's travel clock, uh, a little companion that you might have in your luggage, uh, maybe in a woman's purse. Uh, it is a small time-telling device that you can use uh, no matter where you are. Now, why did I go on this whole brand name spiel at the beginning of this episode? Well, it's because Tiffany & Co. actually has a storied history uh, when it comes to orology, you know, we've seen dual signed watches go for ridiculous prices on the auction lot or, you know, secondhand market, whatever you want to say. If you find a Tiffany & Co. Rolex, that's going to fetch some big money. If you see a Tiffany & Co. dial Patek, that's going to fetch some enormous money. So it's weird when we think of Tiffany & Co., we think of them as being some pretty uh, prolific jewelers. But boy, do they have a history in watchmaking. Now, did Tiffany & Co. produce the movement of this little gem? Actually, no, they did not. Let's flip this thing over. 
Movado Factories, Switzerland, another orological heavy hitter. Um, you know, Movado was incredible pretty much up until like 1982 when the business changed hands and boy, did they just drive that company into the ground. But you know, Movado, with their history uh, with Zenith and some other really, really prolific watchmakers, they were putting out some incredible watches. So whereas I might not be the biggest fan of the original Movado Museum watch, uh, they made some incredible timepieces and I've had the you know privilege of, of carrying some of them in my vintage store. Now, Movado produced a 15 joule manual wind movement for this little travel clock. And the way you wind it is incredible, okay? Uh, well, let me show you the details first. So of course, you see this leather uh, all around this clock's case. Um, you know, this watch, this travel clock, I should say, is from circa 1940, so it is showing its age here and there, but you see a little star here stamped into the metal. And one of the most beautiful facets of this watch is the crown. You see almost a floral pattern on this watch's crown. Now, I mentioned a 15 jewel Movado movement for this travel clock. And the way you wind it, I'm gonna try to catch it on camera. I'm gonna push this closed. I'm going to gently open it again. <laughs> it's not magic, guys. Uh, this inner track has a gear which is actually winding the crown every time you open and close it. Now you can also manually actuate that crown, but it is incredible that I was able to find one of these. And uh, again, another little detail, not only is it dual signed, Tiffany & Co and Movado Factory Switzerland, uh, has a nice little stand right here. How cool is that? I absolutely love this thing. Let's go ahead and prop it up and we'll zoom out a bit and I'll show you all of it in its glory. So here it is, running like a champ, ticking away. Um, it's such a fun piece of orological history. Uh, now, Tiffany & Co. has produced a few of these little travel clocks. Um, unfortunately, a lot of the ones you find online are quartz, and at the time of filming, May 2021, there's only one other Movado-made uh, manual wind mechanical movement Tiffany & Co. travel clock that I was able to find anywhere on the internet and it's selling for just under $2,000. It's actually $1,999. Uh, this one, again, shameless plug, I am uh, selling at my own store uh, for a lot less. So I'm just so excited to be able to have this on my desk as my little companion. Um, but what's so fun is that I get to almost keep it forever because I'm filming it and uh, I'm able to share it with you. So whoever um, chooses to pull the trigger on this little travel companion and, and put it in their uh, study or home office or man cave or wherever you want to put it, uh, they can have it but we can also kind of share in its enjoyment and its history uh, simply by kind of filming this and keeping it on the channel because I'd be so remiss if I just had this and uh, didn't share it with you guys. So it, it is such a fun piece. I'm, I'm, un, I'm, I'm at a loss for words, honestly, that I, I was able to find such a unique piece of watchmaking history, uh, but yeah. Anything dual signed with Tiffany and, and the fact that this is Movado made, back from when Movado was actually uh, well respected, yeah, I'm just ecstatic to have found it. So yeah, guys, just wanted to share this little piece of history with you. Um, I guess this is the first time I'm, I'm talking about something that is not technically a wristwatch. Uh, so yeah, again, if I find anything incredible like this, uh, I mean, I'm a bit biased. Everything at the shop is incredible in my opinion. But if I find something super duper unique like this, I always try to get it in front of the camera for you guys. Um, and I hope you enjoy it. And at the time of filming, uh, this immaculate Hamilton is also still available. Look at how gorgeous. You know, it's funny. Um, I found this for the shop. I've been wearing it for a little while. 
And then Hamilton releases this nice, thin, kind of vintage-esque jazz master. Um, but it, it, it's crazy. You can see their roots, right, when they do these pseudo reissues. But yeah, this is the real deal. So check out the store, guys. We have a bunch of really cool inventory over there and we restock every week. Um, unfortunately, or I mean, fortunately for me, but unfortunately for the uh, slow pokes out there, we do tend to sell out like every week. But uh, I'm trying to pick up the pace with the restocks. And again, we have some really, really interesting things like this. So just wanted to share this with you guys. I will catch you on the next one. Again, I want to thank everyone uh, who supports me, not only here on the channel, but at the shop. And, uh, you know, with my affiliate links and, and with the channel memberships, we cannot do any of this without you guys. So um, thank you. Because every person who joins the channel membership, every person who watches an episode, um, you're helping me to get more things for the shop and sell more things, which helps me pay my editors and film more things. So it's really, honestly, this little um, symbiotic relationship we have with all my little ventures over here, and I can't do any of it without you. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. Links to these items will be in the description below. Always remember, I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah.